Okay, so in this video, we're looking at some um, examples from the using the formulas we talked about earlier um, in the la in week one part or week two part one uh, lesson. It says, "What is a tenth term of the sequence three, six, 12? Well, we always want to determine is this an arithmetic sequence or geometric or something else. In this case, if you notice, it's not arithmetic because because the differences are not the same. So then we look at the ratios: six over three equals um, 2, 12 over 6 also equals 2, so we know that the um, common ratio of these problems um, is 2 and 2, so that this is a geometric sequence. So we can create a formula. If you remember our formula, t to the n is always the first term, 3, times the common ratio, which in this case is 2, and then you have to remember that it's always going to be to the n minus 1 because when you plug in 1 for n, so the t1 term, you have to get 3 out. So you need 2 to the 0 power. So that's why it's t, 2 to the n minus 1. So if I want the 10th terms, it's just finding t to the 10 equals 3 times 2 to the 10 minus 1. So that equals 3 times um, 2 raised to the 9th power. And if you were to multiply that out on your calculator, you would get 1,500 and 36. And so the tenth term of this sequence is 1536. And if you notice in a geometric sequence, a lot of times if it's going up, it goes up in a very, very, very quick fashion. Okay, uh, now we move on to sums. If you remember, this is a finite term sum. Um, this is a geometric sequence because my ratio between terms is three. And so you can see that it's a geometric sequence. It's finite, so we use this um, formula. Sn equals the first term times 1 minus the ratio, which in this case is 2, raised to the um, 1 minus, my bad, 1 minus 2 to the n, all over 1 minus the ratio, um, actually it's r to the n, isn't it? So the ratio to the n over 1 minus r. Our first term, our t1, is just 2, so that goes here. Our 1 minus r to the n, well, the ratio is 3. We want the first 9 terms, and so to the 9th. All over 1 minus 2, or 3, 1 minus 3, which is the ratio. So that's going to give me, well, you need to calculate the 1 minus 3 raised to the 9th, which is negative 19, 6, 8, 2. If you notice in this one, it's actually pretty easy at this point to calculate because 1 minus 3 is negative 2. The 2's cancel, the negatives cancel, so the sum of this series would be 19,682. If you know the common ratio, you know the first term, then it's very easy to find the sum of a finite geometric series. This is an infinite series. Remember, you're going to use your, ratio, your formula um, S is just equal to... Um, the first term, t1, over 1 minus the ratio. Very, very easy. Now remember, for this to happen, r, the absolute value of the ratio, has to be less than 1. So in this case, the ratio is just 2 over 8, uh, 1 half over 2. Yeah, both of those turn out to be 1 fourth. 1 eighth over 1 half is also 1 fourth. So our common ratio is 1 fourth. Our t is 8, t1 is 8, so our sum is just going to be 8 over 1 minus 1 fourth. Well, that equals 8 over 3 fourths. If you were to simplify this by multiplying by the reciprocal, you get 8 times um, 4 thirds is 32 thirds, or 10 and 2 thirds. And so the sum of this geometric series is just 10 and 2 thirds. Okay, um, this is a different kind of problem that I wanted to throw in there because you got some pr examples like this. It says, what is the fourth term of an the, the fourth term of an arithmetic sequence is 40, and the ninth term is 75. What are the terms that are in between that? Well, there's a couple ways you could do this. One, you could go through and find the formula, um, and to find the formula, you would do this. You would say, okay, um, t1 we don't know, so t4 is just equal to t1 plus the common ratio, which we don't know, and so the ratio, which we're not sure, um, times 
um, in, right? Or we do, if you could say n minus 1, because that's how we did it. So this would be times n minus 1, which would be 4 minus 1, so 3. Okay, so T1 plus 3R. Well, we know that equals 40. And then you could do the same thing for the ninth term, and you get T1, the first term, plus the common ratio we don't know. 9 minus 1 is 8, and that equals 75. Subtract them so that those get canceled out. You end up with negative 5R equals negative 35. So the common ratio is 7. Solve this. You get R, 3R equals, well, 40 minus 7 is 33. So R equals 11. So now we know the formula is TN is just going to be the, um, I meant T1 here. Nope, we've got that backwards. It's going to be R is 7, so you're going to get T1 equals 7 times 3 equals 40. So subtract 21, and you get T1 equals 19. Shouldn't have done that so fast. So T1 equals 19, so you're going to get 19 plus 7 times N minus 1. So if you want the terms, you just plug in 5 for N, then 6 for N, then 7 for N, then 8 for N. Or you, can, you could have done this and said, well, if that's the fourth term, then I need to know the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. There's my ninth term. And so this is 40 and this is 75. Well, that means you're adding five, five different times. Well, to add five, five different times, you need to cover 40, 30, 75 minus 40, which is 35. 35 divided by five is seven. And so you could have just gone through and after doing that, added one each time, added seven each time and got the middle terms. Um, you can have the same type of problem using geometric. Um, one way to think about this one, so it says the third term of a geometric sequence is 4, the fifth term is 8. Well, the third term um, of a geometric sequence is 4. Well, the next term of a geometric sequence is just going to be 4 times r, right? The common ratio. And so the, the fifth term then is 4r squared. Well, that shows us that um, 4r squared just equals 8. And so r, equal, r squared equals 2. Take the square root of both sides, and you get r equals square root of 2. Now notice it's actually plus or minus square root of 2. So what's the fourth term? Well, it could either be 4 times the square root of 2, or it could have also been negative 4 times the square root of 2. Either one of those answers would have been OK, because when you solve my formula over here, I get r is square root of 2. Notice, if I would have said the eighth term there, it would have been done the exact same way, except you would have ended up with, instead of r squared for the fifth term, you would end up with r to the fifth. And so you would have been multiplying through by the fifth root of 2 over and over again. And so you can go through and do that for however many. And this number actually is called, doing this is actually what's called the geometric mean of two numbers, because mean is always finding the number right between. And this time we're doing it in a geometric sequence instead of an arithmetic sequence like we usually do mean. So that's some examples of doing some sequence and series problems. You need to make sure you know the two geometric um, series formulas, and um, then you should be able to solve most of the problems.